And Sato's Place is brought to you by... TV composing from one of the best. We've got a special ITL and a really big announcement. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. Man, glad you could drop by today. Uh, we've got a, a lot going on, a lot, lot of stuff to hip you to. It's going to be a great show. How was your week, man? Well, if I can get this Tic Tacs, I need to get my Tic Tacs earlier so they're gone by the time I get on the air. <laughs> this is uh, excuse not, me a second here. This is not broadcast <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> we have actually professional broadcasters as visitors here. We're not, we're not showing up so well. So yeah. now that your breath is fresh, how was your week? Man, you know what? Got a lot done. The new room is just spectacular. Yeah. It's, uh, you know what? We're, we should let them know. We will do a walk and talk on that room and show it to them, post it on our website really yeah. soon. As soon as you get finished with your final tweaks and stuff, Gene, are you close? Uh, Gene Grimaldi and I are like, we're like a tag. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that, there goes that problem. <laughs> Gene Grimaldi and I are like a little tag team ma uh, match, you know? Yeah. Like, I mix it, he masters it. We're just. That's perfect. This is great. It's so much perfect. fun. How was your week? You, I never asked you. How was your week? Uh, it is insane. Our little baby is morphing into things. We're going to talk about some of that today. There's a whole lot going on. Um, I know. But I like it that way. I like it humming. So, uh, should we get to it? Let's do it, my friend. Hey, guys, it's good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. As usual, we're coming to you live from the Art Institute of California, Los Angeles, from our beautiful HD studio, which tends for. Stands for top guests, great information, high quality, spectacular entertainment, a bit of humor, and the greatest host, manager, and friend the world has ever known, oh, Herb Trowick. And the D is for Dave. Well, very good. You know, I'm black, so I can't turn red. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're doing it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, uh, there, there's that. Um, lots of stuff for you. First of all, listen, thank you guys so much. Um, we just, we're on our way to 30,000 YouTube subscribers. The push is on. As we've been telling you for the last couple of weeks, you guys doing that and making that move makes this show uh, available to you for free. It gives us a lot of impact. It allows yeah. us to create some of the things we're creating for Very you. So important. thank you for much. This show is your show, so we'll keep that going. Um, big stuff with Vintage King. First of all, hello to our guys there. Jeff Leibovich is in the chat room. Jeff. Um, you have a stump the chat, the stump the VK yeah, guy no. question? Well, when, when Jeff's in the room, it's kind of pointless, but uh, <laughs> this is more of just... Uh, just expand our horizons a little bit, Jeff. Uh, explain to us what reamping is, how to use it, what are the techniques and tools to accomplish that. All right, very good. And you know that will run below us as you view the show. Um, cool thing they're doing, they're doing a Pensado discount. So 25% off any VK brand. It runs 6-5 through 6-18, June 5th through June 18th. Um, the promo code is Pensado Deal 3. So you'll see the URL right underneath me. Promo code yeah, well, is. I'll do that. Am I eligible? No, you're part of the inside thing, so you can't get anything. Uh, and by the way, I didn't tell you about the headphones Shure sent me, but I'll tell you about that later. Oh, my um, goodness. So Pensado Deal you Three. This, Chong. Make sure you make sure you go there. Um, let Let's talk about what's upcoming that we teased last week. So man, I can't wait to talk about this. So here's the deal, guys. Um, we went to Vintage King about six or eight months ago and proposed something, and they jumped on. So on July 20th at the incredibly sick Vintage King facility, we're going to launch the Pensado Vintage King Gear Expo. Now, the cool part about this is it's just going to be classic Pensadian. It is Gear Expo meets Summer Block Party. We're going to have some of our big guests there. Prince Board from Black Eyed Peas is coming. Ryan Hewitt is coming. Stephen Slade is coming. Dave and I were both on the phone with people this morning that we'll announce shortly. You can always go to our landing page and get updated on it, but it's gonna be a ball. We're gonna have, it's indoor, outdoors, food trucks. Dave and I are gonna broadcast live. You're gonna be able to come down, take pictures, get them up virally. We wanna meet you. We're gonna interview some guests, have some fun. DJ is gonna be playing music. Mm -hmm. The Vintage King facility is one of a kind. It's the place where Stevie Wonder goes and Lady Gaga goes, but they also make it available to you. So real pros go down here and decide how they're going to make their music and what they're going to do, and this is your opportunity to come down. You go to, your, to our landing page, 
put in your email information. Now we teased it last week and immediately got like 100 people. So we're saying get there quick. We still have some time to do it. We'll update you on those guests. We're gonna have a bunch of stars from a bunch of different kind of genres. They'll hang out with you, answer your questions, give you advice, take pictures. Plus, there's some very cool sponsors. So you know our, our normal the, folks will be there. The gear and the guests are both accessible. You can touch the gear, you can touch the guests. Or That's right. You can audition the guests. Anyway, you, yeah, get you can't it. touch the guests. You can't touch the guests. So um, I don't know. Stephen Slate would like it. Steven Slate's Stephen's a rock star. A little out there. He'll be. He'll be there. I want to see you there? Come down July twentieth, ten o'clock to four o'clock. It's free. Rare for Herb to do free. So just so, it's over at four in the afternoon. Yes, it is. Oh, that's it a is. Shame. So jump on that. We want to see you. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, Avid. Hey, Avid is going to be at the Gear Expo. They're our partners. We love them. So enough stuff. Enough going on. We've got a brand new ITL, and this one's a little special, a little different. Why don't you introduce it? Well, um, our guest today, the best pre pre show interview I've ever done. He he planned the show for me. He planned the batter's box for me, and he did an ITL for me. Nice. I don't know how else to describe it. Gives you a little insight before we start talking to our guest today about uh, his process. So, I, I, Herb and I found this fascinating. If you'll run. It. Hey everybody, Rob Duncan here. Well, it's the fall, Castle Season 5 is just getting started. And I thought I'd take a trip to one of my favorite musical instrument stores, Apex Electronics in Sun Valley. Now they may not realize they're a musical instrument store, but I know better. Let's see what we can find. This one's a keeper. Here, a crime scene right there. The F sharp model. Rob Bowman, the executive producer of Castle, once described one of the sounds I made as a woolly mammoth. I think I found woolly mammoth 2.0 right here. <laughs> I can walk down the same aisle five times and find something new each time. Well, this is going in our shopping cart. Where is our shopping cart? Uh, was it this way? <laughs> I think I'm lost. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're just uh, at the corner of Fruitvale and Meany. I was gonna say they had everything but the kitchen sink, but I guess I can't say that now. This one kind of reminds me of the sound I had for Beckett's Sniper in season four. Well, every time I come here to Apex, I discover something new, and today's no exception. I'm very excited to get these new instruments back into the studio and under some microphones. So keep your ears open, see if you can hear the new sounds, and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. So, how interesting is that? Um, cool. When we got that, we were like, that should be our ITL. <laughs> I know. Because it's so cool, and it's a great way to introduce, I mean, literally, Robert Duncan was, was referred to us by Ward Hake, who you guys saw from 20th Century Fox, and he just said, this guy is such an amazing composer and the way he approaches sound. So we are happy to welcome to this table, Robert Thank you. Duncan. How are you, man? Great. Great, Great. thank you for you coming, guys. thank you for coming. Dave, far away. We didn't do that this time. Far away. Robert, man, thanks for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Um, what we saw there was you, you know, you grabbing some, uh, Let's call them organic sounds, uh -huh. right? which is which is a, a pretty integral part of your philosophy. You like to underlay synth sounds with organic sounds in 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 the in your or underlay composition. organic sounds with synth sounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it, there's it, no rules, right? What's the logic behind that? 
uh, will really, um, as I find in general, uh, creativity is often fueled by desperation. And, um, uh, you know, I, I grew up, um, I you know, remember getting my first synth, and I, I come back from the, the days of uh, uh, just using synthesizers for, for scores. I didn't have an opportunity to use a lot of live musicians. Um, and there was always, uh, uh, there was only, there were very obvious limitations sonically to the, the synthesizers. So I was always looking for tricks to make them more, more interesting and get more, more mileage out of them. And really one day uh, I had an epiphany. Um, I had almost randomly purchased a, a wind gong that was on sale at, at uh, this is up in Canada. So it was our version of... Uh, Steve's music, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Or maybe it was Long McQuaid, but uh, but uh, there was a wind gong on sale, and I just bought it because I don't know deal on a wind gong. I just sure, grabbed it, and uh, um, I was scoring a very uh, tense uh, scene. Uh, a sort of it was a, an interrogation scene, and I just put uh, a little bit of wind gong underneath the whole thing, like a like an atonal pad. And it brought the whole cue to life. And I, I realized that if if I can just put a little bit of organic in with the electronic, it it just changes everything. Um, mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's it's different than um, uh, you can get uh, a, a piano with every note pitch perfect and uh, beautifully recorded and engineered, but then you miss the 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 natural chaos, the creaking of the pedal, and the uh, all the organic chaotic elements that really I find give the the music character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in in terms of <clears throat> in terms of your job within the within the framework of TV, there's several positions, and I'm 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 just such a neophyte when it comes to that world. There's the sound effects guy. There's the ADR guy, automatic dialogue replacement. Uh -huh. There's the the composer, which that's what you do, and then um, what, what's some more? I can't remember them all. Well, I'm in I'm in the post production phase. So, okay. uh, and actually, the composer is often one of the first people that sees uh, a almost finished product. So often, the composer's uh, is the only pair of fresh eyes and ears. So uh, mm. I, I come in because you have to be accurate. So it needs to be close to the final cut for you to do it. You need yeah, to and it everything moves at a. At a fairly quick pace to put out a, a show a week. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so in my Carmads in Post are basically, uh, I work with uh, a music editor who is my, uh, basically my, my, my partner in, in uh, delivering the music to the dubbing stage. I work alongside uh, sound effects people, dialogue, uh, and Foley. Mm -hmm. I love Foley. Mm -hmm. on, on, on on shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and, and uh, The Shield, uh, Castle, uh, explain, to, explain to me what you're trying to accomplish because you see a scene and the scene might have temporary music or nothing at all. Right. Now you sit down with the producer and you guys spot, is yes, that what it's called? Exactly. And so you might come up with a minute or two minutes of music for, for that particular scene let, let's assume that scene is is a dream sequence. What would you do? Well, basically, the target is is always the the conversation is the same. And one and it is you know they say talking about music is like dancing about architecture. It's it's very difficult to um, sometimes put the right words. I, I, the producer may say, "I hear guitar here," and guitar could mean a million different things. It could mean an ambient pad. It could mean a, a, a old Martin. It could be. Sure. It, 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 it really could be anything. So when I talk to producers uh, and m most people that do what I do, we encourage them to talk in emotions because that's the bottom line. Um, and actually the very first thing that the big lesson that I learned when I was starting out is the emotion is the target. And if you're not serving the right emotion, uh, uh, you're, it's it's not going to last. It's it's you're not going to work for very long. It, it's got a it, you're um, a mentor of mine once said uh, the last thing a director or producer uh, wants is a composer expressing himself all over his movie. It, it it's got to be <laughs> um, serving the scene. You're a part of a team. Yeah. So uh, and my department is really the emotional department. Mm -hmm. uh, the scene gets shot. Um, 
the writing and acting are doing their job, then the question is, how does the producer, how do the producers or the director want the audience to feel about exactly. this scene? One of my questions to you was, your job seems to be to hit the emotional button exactly. every single time, yeah. whatever the scenario and is. Ideally, to do it without getting caught too much. Yeah, right. To do right. it subtly. Like, so it's organic, it sits in there. <clears throat> I feel that way, but I don't know why I feel that yes, way. Yes, exactly. Got it, got it, yeah. got, on, it got it. On Buffy, however, that show had an underlying kind of comedy element to it, and you played the straight guy musically exactly. in those in those yeah com comedy is is different people approach comedy different ways in when it comes to the score mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Buffy my instructions were to uh, sort of play the the straight guy in the in the comedy duo and uh, uh, we would play an epic action uh, sort of uh, treatment for a, a, a battle scene and then I would stop on a dime a joke would happen, then I would pick up and uh, carry on with the action. But uh, my, the objective was to clear for the humor, let the humor play on its own against, mm -hmm. I mean, because humor is, is basically juxtaposition. Yeah, so, um, exactly. so I was juxtaposed against the humor mm -hmm. musically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, interesting. When we were talking yesterday, you said something that really struck a chord with me, uh, pun intended. You, uh, you said that one of the hardest things you have to do in, in, in creating and enhancing the emotion of a scene is to not step on the visual, that, that, that the visual has to be the visual, the, the audio has to be the audio, and you like to create a conflict between what we see and what we hear, and that's how you get some of these emotions to, is that an accurate description of what you do? Yeah, uh, well, it's, um, again, whenever, every show I find has its own personality and its own, um, uh, I sort of reinvent the rules a little bit for, for every project. I find that um, often what I'm called to do is, is to support what's already on the screen. But sometimes, uh, and, and it's, it's most rewarding when the music can communicate something that's not on, on the screen. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and often they'll, they'll ask me to communicate something that wasn't if maybe the joke wasn't funny enough, or or, mm -hmm. or they'll say, you know, can you make him more guilty? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what is that a G minor? You know, I, right, I don't know. Right. But um, use a slide whistle for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's the classic. Well, that's well, yeah. I, I have a slide whistle that I haven't used yet, <laughs> but it's there. It's like behind glass, and I break in emergency. But, but, but the music essentially becomes a bit of the story arc, a little bit, right? It propels it. It it tells it, it what to do, tells you what to do, so. It, um, people sometimes talk about the music as being a character right. in a show. Mm -hmm. I've, al I've often felt, rather than being a separate character, it, it kind of is the character of the show. It, mm -hmm. it sort of helps define the overall personality of, of the show. I, I agree, because I, I watch a lot of television film, and, and I think those musical signatures, I won't mention the movie, uh, it was a big tentpole franchise, and the music was awful. Oh. And it just got in the way of the movie. And when you get it wrong, it screams its presence. Mm -hmm. And when you get it right, you end up at the end of the thing going, I just, I feel really good or scared or yeah. interested or laughed. And it and it played that role, but it has a, it has a signature to it. The, Am I correct? We're, we're like the emotional special forces. We don't want to take credit <laughs> for any of our accomplished uh, missions. Gymnastics, you know? right? The emotional drones, boom. Uh, um, one of Molly's favorite things to, 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 to carry in pile on Herb's thread, um, my, one of Molly's favorite things is when the music reiterates the visual. And, and like, for example, we've got a beautiful sunny day field and these two lovely couples are walking and running towards each other more rapidly and rapidly in their white everything. And there's harps playing in the background. You you just use some like break drums and clanging and layer some synths and throw some keys on the ground when they hit right. You wouldn't do that. Well, it's, you would never do that. It's just uh, it's it's. I guess it's a little. Um, we want our brains to be exercised. I think. And if if uh, mm. if what we see is point A and what we hear is point B, I think it's it's not as much fun for our minds if they're just. Converge. Yeah, it's like, we expected it. There's nothing. Same thing in my world too. I think that if if you see something. 
Mm. If you see uh, uh, if you if you see a battle scene, for example, and there's battle music, that's more or less expected. But if you hear um, something that's uh, lamenting or something slow, Absolutely. as opposed that contrasts Absolutely. the action, then your brain has to work to make that connection. R remember in the Godfather scene when all the killing was going on in that third act, and the music there was just so compelling and haunting, and it made everything have that impact. Let me, can I segue to time and ask you a couple of things sure. about time? I love this quote. David Mamet said that doing a film is like running a marathon. Doing a TV show is like running till you die. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great quote. It is. And, and, and the fact of the matter is a minute of score, what you do, represents two or three hours of work. So yeah. talk about time and the process and the pressure of, of how you have it's, to work. And it's funny because I'm obsessed, of course, trying to manage all the deadlines, I'm obsessed with, uh, I, I just call them hours per minute, basically, mm -hmm. for one minute of music, how many hours of work is it? Because it, one thing about music, it could be the most, it could be the simplest thing in the world, mm -hmm. or it can be excruciatingly difficult. And it's funny, I'm still not completely uh, understanding what makes it one or the other, because some of the, the themes that have worked out the best for me have literally been me sitting down and improvisation and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then other times, uh, I, for example, the, when I was working on the main theme to the show Castle. Mm -hmm. uh, Congratulations on that, Castle's uh, done really well. Thank yeah. you. Um, uh, we, we, I did, I think, 12 versions of the main title and it's six seconds long. Wow. And uh, the, the first um, directive was swagger, like, um, Put into music Castle's swagger, and I and I I, I you know I, you, you I called just, you called the first black friend you had. That, <laughs> well, I, with swagger. <laughs> it is it, it, one of the great things about the job is trying to figure out these puzzles. Sure. And another show I was working on, they said we want Bronx Cop. And, and what do what do you yeah. what is Bronx Cop? And then I thought about it, sort of like a, a Zen riddle. Sure. I go back and um, think about it for a while, uh, and I thought, well. I've only been to New York two or three times, but last time I was there, I was fascinated um, by the buskers uh, that played on uh, paint buckets. Yeah. And I did a little bit of research and found that that was actually invented in the Bronx. Or it was, was it, really? it started, um, and I found the guy who supposedly started this wow. paint bucket percussion. It, Sort of uh, related to drum corps sure. type uh, stomp, rhythms. The group stomp. Very virtuosic uh, rhythms. Anyway, so that was my answer. Then I take my answer to the Zen riddle. Uh, they want Bronx. My uh, and it was a, a it, it was a show that had a light-hearted side to it as well as an action side. And I thought bucket drumming could be light, could also be kind of fun. Yeah. So I pitched it to them and, and they liked it. And so the score for that particular pilot wow. was uh, bucket drumming. Oh, that's fabulous. With, with Castle, um, so Swagger, I thought could be, it could be hip hop track. I mean, that's the first thing I thought of, but then I don't know if that's gonna right. work for them. I, 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 I tried, like I said, 12 different versions. Uh, what and, did you settle on finally? Well, uh, we had two, we had two sounds to Castle. One was the rock star castle, and one was the the hijinks, goofy, uh -huh. quirky castle. Uh -huh. He 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 sort of has he has elements of both. He'll start in in being cool, and then he'll somehow trip up and, and go goofy, uh, right? Oh, so cool. the formula I basically had um, three bars of music uh, for this opening theme, and uh, so it was two bars of. Uh, hijinks castle and then a little bit of swagger at the end so time for you you're under pressure constantly to yes constantly from beginning to end yeah and it just starts all over again exactly got it wow wow on the sopranos correct me if i'm wrong uh there was no music and then on 24 it was wall to wall music but in between a tv show is what 42 minutes without commercials exactly yeah. what would what would be considered a, a, a minimal average amount of music Again, minutes. this is this is part of the personality of the show, and and what uh, what would be considered a lot or a little? I would say um, on Castle, for example, it's about thirty. Th we aim for thirty-two minutes. They the producers feel Andrew and, they and ask for a Rob, specific amount. Well, they they asked me for a tally at the end of our 
our meetings. And if, uh, and if it's he really heavy, they may, at the final mix stage, they may want to try to pull a couple of cues out. Mm. If it's heavy, they call that a tonnage problem? Exactly. Oh, yeah. well, let's, 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 just, let's just break away. Tell me some of the terms, because the terms fascinate me, like bug on a windshield, tonnage problem. Give me some of the more eclectic terms that people ask for. Yeah, well, again, with the whole challenge of talking about music, we inevitably end up making up a language. So uh, they, um, you know, they'll say, and some, it makes for funny notes, but, uh, but yeah, put a doink on that moment <laughs> or a uh, um, bug on a windshield. With Castle, there's a lot of playing it serious and setting up, it's like setting up and spiking. There's a lot of, there's a setup, and then there's pulling the rug under, out yeah. from underneath your feet. I mean, they come up with, with uh, uh, all the, the ways to describe the things that music can do. And that is one of the things that makes music, to me, the most fascinating, is that it can, it can create sensations in your brain that are hard to put into words. Mm -hmm. Like, one of the things I think about is how music can take you to a place you've been and at the same time, take you somewhere new. And I don't know what other, you know, that's a, it's an interesting juxtaposition, mm -hmm. juxtaposition in, our, in, our, in our brains. Amazing. Um, if, 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 you were to, if you were to make a record, and a, and a person with your same, same skill set but had never worked in film and TV, with, TV was to make a record, who'd make the better record? Seems like, like, like your attention to the emotion and all of those sorts of things would give you an advantage towards the listener manipulating him over the guy with the same uh, well, lengthy I, question. I'm stopping now. I remember when my, uh, my old writing partner from high school and I, we were roommates, and uh, I was starting to work in the film and TV industry in, in Toronto, and I was learning my lesson about taking, um, accounting for every single emotion that people may get from the music that I write. And he was still writing songs, and and uh, he, was, he was working on something, he said, what do you think of this? And I said, yeah, uh, it's great, but why does it sound like this? Or why does it make me feel like this? And he said, I don't know, that's what I felt like writing. And I got very <laughs> irritated because, no, you have to explain why uh, you want me to feel this way and why you're using, you're referencing this genre. Um, uh, but, but basically I would say songs and score serve two different masters. Songs, it's all about the the hook and it's all self-contained with score you're serving the picture and the emotion it's not about the hook it's uh or it's not about music for music's sake it's mm. all music for film or television's sake it's it's very different seriously, approach seriously after hanging out with you yesterday I, I went back and did another mix and i think it was better <laughs> because of you i really do i think there's something uh in 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 today's world we're starving for emotions, and that's what you deal with, various types of emotions, and, 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 and you know, amplify the visual with, with, with music that amplifies the emotions. Can you write, I'm sorry, I heard, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Can you, write, can you write music for a scene without a visual? Can, if someone just says, uh, look at this script and give me some music, can you do that? Having done this for uh, about 13 or 14 years now, that is one of the hardest things for me because it's it's a bit of a the visual is the first it's it provides the roadmap for me yeah. and and every chord that I'll play or every improvisation that I'll do I'll check it against the picture uh, and so you take the picture away and I've got I have no I don't know how to judge what I've done whether it's working because that that the we, ought, we ought to try something we ought to we ought to reach out to Gaga and to Will and uh, Bieber and Justin and have them send you a video <laughs> with no, no music and then let you write their next single based on the video. Do, do it backwards instead of do the song first and then the video. Give you the video and see what kind of song you came up with. Could you do it? Sure. You know what? I, right, there's I, the I, challenge. I do. Um, Contact the, Herb so I can <laughs> cut the deal on that before anybody jumps on it. <laughs> okay. When I'm asked to write music without a picture, I'll often go and find a picture. Oh. I'll just, and it could be, it could be anything, even if it's a, a main theme for something, I'll just find some, it doesn't even have to relate specifically, but I'll, I'll just find a, a, a clip of film that maybe is a helicopter shot or something sure. cinematic, and I'll, I'll just start sketching, yeah. I'll just, 
As you prepare for Batter's Box, quick question. I think that our audience, um, you know, it's a mixture of folks. It's, it's mm. pros and amateurs. It's a wide range of things. But, but we're all dealing now where everybody is a content creator. People publish to YouTube. You have your own tools and stuff. And ultimately, none of that stuff generally has no sound. Right. So, so folks have to be learning some sort of sound design, something that goes past just attaching a song to something. And, and what I find fascinating, why we're so excited to have you, is that generally these worlds are kind of apart, but as the world moves forward, somehow they're sort of forcing themselves together. Is that, sure. does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I even found from moving from Canada to the States, I found that uh, jobs got a little more specific. Of course, when you're starting out, you're, you're probably the, the cameraman and the director and the, the music composer and all those things. In Canada, we were the composer and the music supervisor mm -hmm. and the music editor. Mm -hmm. uh, those are three very different jobs in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, the music super, I don't deal with any songs or, or song placement in shows. Uh, and I don't, uh, I don't uh, make fixes. With the music, uh, music editor, his job is to, or her job, is to be on the dubbing stage and basically make sure the music, if there's any changes that need to be made at the last minute, the music editor will slice and dice and move things around and, and, and be that mm, on the front, you, front line. Uh, I, I bet you $1,000 this is a question that, that we're getting on the internet right now, but how do you get paid? Do you get paid per note? Per per, no. <laughs> <laughs> do you get paid per minute or per song, per job? Like, do you get, you get paid for the entire series? Per episode. You get paid per episode. Was, yeah, I found that out. Uh, and if there's no music, you get the same amount of money. I found that out. I was fortunate. I worked on a really great show um, called Terriers that uh, was very sparse, and they wanted a very real, uh, un, uh, uh, you know, un, unsupported by music um, uh, drama. And there were a couple of episodes. I showed up to the meeting, the spotting meeting, and... Uh, the editor turned around and said, "We've we don't have any music for you this week," and uh, the paycheck still showed up. Nice. So, nice. Like, tee up batter's like, box, my I want friend. That kind of gig. Let's try that, everybody. Let's, let's, okay. Let's get a bunch of money. In the I'm making a call. Susan shows over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me preface batter's box by saying, um, "This is going to be a cool ass batter's box." <laughs> Sequencer. Uh, logic. Ah. Reverb. I love my lexicon PCM native. Ooh. Junkyard or flea market? I would take a junkyard, depending on the flea market. If I was in <laughs> Bali, maybe flea market. Okay, <laughs> Rose Bowl ain't bad. Uh, Strings? String patches um, uh, uh, would be um, Albion Spitfire uh, strings, Hollywood strings. Oh, Hollywood. Ooh. Piano? Piano. Um, uh, if, oh, if, oh. Okay. If, if there's time for it, my disc clavier. Uh, if if it's a patch, then there's a tone hammer. Wrong answer. Okay. Piano under two hundred dollars. I love that story. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that goes back to the, the the flea market or the or eBay or Craigslist. Yeah. Okay, we'll explain that one in a minute. Microphone. Um, my Sennheiser uh, uh, MKH 800s, and uh, I've got a couple of uh, Flea U 47s on the way that oh. I'm excited about. Ooh. Cool. Uh, brass. Uh, Hollywood brass patch. Of, given, if, if, assuming I can't get the real thing, of course, there's nothing like the real thing. The strangest instrument you've ever created. Created, uh, or or discovered. I'll take either one. Uh, it, it, at a pawn shop, I found an instrument. I have no clue what it's called, but it's 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 part kalimba. There's uh, three strings that can be plucked, and then there's an ashtray. Bolted, <laughs> bolted into the actual body of the instrument. I've, really? I'm still trying to Can figure you out. Send the, us a picture oh, one sure. day. Sure, right. absolutely. We'll post it on the website okay, sure. and last but not least, being being Spanish, percussion. Percussion. Um, I I like to do a lot of that live because that's a, a, a one. You know, I don't need a, a huge team of people, uh, so I collect percussion instruments. I've got some timpanis and some you know, drum kit. And do you do it yourself? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. With, cool. With a little help from my friend Flex Time. I'll concede okay. defeat, Herb. 
Uh, his bat speed was crazy. Oh, incredible. Yeah, incredible. I fast. told you this was going to be special. Well, it was really On this piano that he found for 200 bucks, uh -huh. he took a couple of the strings and raised them up so he could bow them. <laughs> 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 what, what, what TV show was that in? Uh, well, that was in, uh, I used that in the show Last Resort, and I also used it in Castle. Wow. Um, what note? It was one of the low ones. It was. It had a. It, had a, it was super rich in harmonics. Had to be a flat, just, a D flat or a B flat. If it well, was, if, I, it, if it wasn't before, it's flat now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds eerie to me. I don't know why. F sharp yeah, me sounds too. Bright. Actually, isn't that funny? Yeah. 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 Let's introduce uh, our man Chongor in the corner office. Chong, how are you? Good. How are you guys doing today? I call him Chong Chang. I call him <laughs> He's Chong Chang. He's, he's my boy. He's our boy. So, yeah. so Chongor, Chong, you got some questions? Chong was bullied, by the way. Was he really? Yeah, I was I not bullied, but you know what? Way. I found who bullied him, and I whooped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, he so Chongor's cool. Um, what do you got for us, Chongor? The first question is from Nate Merchant. What's your creative process when writing to a locked picture as opposed to a script or storyboard? Um, I don't actually write a lot to scripts, but, um, but like I was um, saying in the, that it's, it's easier to write when I can react to something. So uh, at the very least, if I, if, I'm write, if I have to write something to a script, I'll be trying to come up with the picture in my mind mm -hmm. and, or try to find something, even if it's... Uh, uh, you know, a very rough cut or a daily or something that they can send me. Um, but I don't end up, fortunately, don't end up writing a lot from scripts. John Gore, give us another one. Marius Bernados wants to know, what are, the, what are some of the top mistakes you hear from beginner composers when writing uh, music for film? Uh, I would, well, the, the f definitely, um, uh, I would say uh, about making sure that you're serving the emotion of the scene, that you're serving the picture. And I think it's, it's I made the mistake when I first started out, uh, and it, it's sometimes it's accompanied by really loving what you're writing. Sometimes when I really love what I'm writing, I start to get worried, like, oh no, this is gonna get thrown out because I'm enjoying myself too much on this. Because it, it, when, you, when you get excited about music, sometimes it's, it, you start to let go a little mm -hmm. bit of, like, I really in, want in to my mix world, it's write the same this thing. music, yeah. but it may not be what the, you know, right. along the mission objective. Mm. You told me, Robert, um, and I thought this was pretty cool. You said, don't leave your footprint over, uh, don't, don't, don't leave your footprints all over everything. I, I guess that would be a mistake a lot of rookies make. They leave too big a footprint of their own. Well, you, you're, you're part of the overall, you're, you're, a, a, you're a part of a whole. You're not the whole. I guess that's the, that's the, the main thing, and, and you want to, I, uh, it's, it's a team production, mm -hmm. and uh, I find that music works best, uh, I think music spikes really well, if, if the acting and the writing and the What's directing, spiking? well I mean in terms of like a volleyball spike, oh. um, if, if, uh, if the, the acting and the writing and the, and the directing set it up beautifully, and make you already feel sad, let's say, mm -hmm. and then the music comes in sad, oh, over the then music. you'll start to cry. If uh, if the scene hasn't even started and the music is, the violins come out, you kind of feel like, oh, they're, they're selling me too hard. Yeah, they're, yeah. Um, that makes sense. You know, I'm feeling, uh, I feel like my job is like a salesman, and the minute um, my pitches are, are uh, uh, felt um, or, um, exposed then I become a cheesy salesman I'm, I'm some guy that's underneath the show saying this is so sad this is this is <laughs> terrible and you just want him to go away yeah you've got a great gift my friend Sean Gore got, a, got time for a couple more give yeah. us some from Terry Shannon how long does it take you to score an average TV episode like Castle uh, well it takes every second that they give me um, basically uh, you fill up the time uh, because there's no one right answer, uh, you know, there's always, um, if I could have as much time as I wanted, I'm sure I would take two or three weeks for, for, for every episode. Uh, but in general, I like to, there, of the 32 minutes, I like to spend three, uh, two to three hours per minute of music. Once I have the themes already set and I have the, the instruments at the ready, it, it goes by a lot quicker than if I'm trying to invent the palette of a new show. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. One more, Chongor. That's a lot of time. This one's from Gordon Goodluck. What is the most bizarre sound that you've created and how did you make it? The most bizarre sound. Um, well, that, that $200 Craigslist piano has made some pretty uh, uh, awesomely hellish sounds. Um, what I've show was that in? Uh, that was in a, a few different shows. I, uh, I did a movie called The Entitled, and I, and I used it a lot in, in that. Um, in terms of interesting sounds out of unusual instruments, I, I borrowed a, a friend's shotgun once and, <laughs> and just recorded a percussion library, uh, uh, not actually firing the gun, but just uh, recording the clicks and the, you know, um, you know, uh, loading it and un un unloading it and that sort of thing. What do you record into? Do you, a virtual uh, sampler or a hardware sampler? Uh, everything is virtual for me now. Okay. Yeah, so everything goes into Logic. And okay. uh, actually one of the things I love about Logic is how close the native sampler in that sequencer um, is to the creative process. I can, I can go into the live room, record a bunch of uh, uh, noises, and then in one or two clicks, it's a sampler instrument all mapped out, and I can start experimenting with it from there. Very fascinating. One thing, uh, I, want, I want to get my question in, um, like I haven't had one already. Are, are you aware of trends in music, trends in sound? Do they, do they make their way into what you do, or are you oblivious to what's going on in the I world. I think it's a necessity um, for a composer to be able to speak to the, the, the fashion trends in music. I, music is essentially Absolutely. like fashion. It, it, things, elements come and go. And, and I think that uh, sometimes if there's uh, something in music that's giving away the score a bit too much, that'll lose its... Um, that'll lose its uh, uh, trendiness. I think that um, I've noticed that a lot of film scores occupy the low frequencies more. Yeah, there's... Um, uh, After Jaws, uh, I, they I all I think do. that's good news for trombone players and a little harder news for trumpet players. I just think that there's a trend towards the more subliminal, maybe, lower frequency. So, so, so which one of my number one records influenced you the most? <laughs> I love your work on Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> that was a long time ago. There you go. Alrighty. Um, you know, you're Canadian, and Canadians, you know, we're known for our veracity. I'm, I'm sort of surprised you didn't tell our audience the one complete secret to, to being successful at this. You know what that is? What's that? Having really cool spiked hair. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have that, you can't blow this up. I thought the answer involved flatulence on some point. No, no, not, not <laughs> that, That's why that's not there successful. There goes our Canadian audience. Um, We've already lost Georgia, so there goes Canada. Incredible. Time goes so fast. We done? Yeah, I know. <laughs> already. But listen, we would love to have you back. Would cool. you ever do that? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, love it. one of the beauties about our guests are so giving, and, it, and it's great for our audience. So we do some things on the show. We do some things off the show that are fun. So we'll talk to you about that because our, our audience would, would love to learn from you. Um, a pleasure. Continued success. Uh, we you. will be bugging you to stay involved. Um, a couple quick things before Dave says goodbye. Our good buddy John Bourne and his beautiful wife, uh, they welcomed Rachel Douglas into the world just recently. So congratulations yeah, absolutely. to them. Another Pensadian angel is in place. Uh, and again... Uh, Gear Expo, July 20th, lots of folks, Gobbler, McDSP, Isotope, Abel, all kinds of stuff. Um, get your emails to our landing page. Vendors, get to Chevy quick. Uh, it's going to be hot. It's going to be fun. going to be informational. We're going to do a lot of good stuff. So uh, look forward to that. And uh, Dave, take us home. Guys, um, I, had the, uh, I, I was lucky enough to spend a little time with Robert prior to uh, the show over the last couple of days. And... I learned so much. There's so many things in so many areas that, uh, as Herb always says, it's about audio. It's not about necessarily music. It's about audio. Music is a part of audio, my favorite part. Uh, it's, it's the same 12 notes. It's, it's, it's the coolest thing on earth. And so I'm, I'm really proud that Herb has taken the initiative w with the show to, to expose you to all the different forms of audio that uh, that use these 12 notes and 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 
I think Robert was particularly inspirational. That uh, if I was 16, I would, I might even choose that over mixing. It sounds like a pretty exciting thing. Maybe it's the grass is greener herb, mm -hmm. but uh, explore your options. Uh, particularly if you're at a school, talk to your teachers, talk talk to the people around you, and and, and don't just automatically go for mixing. I personally think it's the greatest thing on earth. It's, 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 it's my life, it consumes me every moment of the day. But there's other options that you should explore. And today was a show that really did that incredibly well. And we thank Robert for that and Herb for his initiative and leadership in that area vis-a-vis -vis the show. Next week, amigos.